Hi, everyone, and welcome to this interview with Vladimir Milo, Russian opposition leader and senior research associate at Martin Center, who will be talking today about the Russian war against Ukraine. Welcome, Vladimir. Hello, thanks for having me. So as we know, a week ago, Putin declared war on Ukraine, and the first explosions were heard in the cities of Kiev, Kharkiv, Odessa, and Dnipro. This came after Putin recognized the Donetsk uh, People's Republic and the Luhansk People's Republic as independent states and sent his peacekeeping uh, troops into those territories. As of now, there have been several days of shelling and bombing in Ukraine with several targets, including civilian buildings. So Vladimir, we know that the Kremlin Russian, um, the Russian propaganda is machine is very strong and many citizens are uh, relying on television as the main source of information. However, it is hard to believe in the world of social media and internet that only this information gets through. So is the big chunk of the Russian population supporting and accepting uh, Putin's special operation or this is not the case? What will it take for them to learn the truth? And are they turning to the opposition for a different sort of leadership? I would strongly advise against any attempts uh, to measure the attitude of the Russian population at this point, uh, because yes, many of them rely on the information provided by official sources. And uh, the Russian government has been doubling down on efforts to uh, censor all the remaining in available uh, independent media outlets and social media channels. You see that such extreme measures are taken, like closure of Echo Moskvi, the oldest uh, independent uh, Russian radio station. And uh, uh, today, State Duma is considering uh, severe penalties to be introduced for those who, as they say, distribute fake news or whatever Russian uh, propaganda dislikes. So there is a serious uh, offensive uh, on independent media sphere and Russian uh, official pro propaganda portrays what is going on, not like a full scale war, but as only a limited peacekeeping operation in Donbass. Russians are actually unaware that big uh, uh, Ukrainian cities are attacked, uh, bombarded, and uh, buildings destroyed, many casualties. So this is actually what we are doing right now try to distribute these pictures and videos uh, to open the eyes of the public. Uh, largest part of the Russian population is still unaware uh, of what's really going on and lives in some sort of uh, information vacuum. We believe that these efforts will be successful in a few weeks so that more and more millions of people will become aware about what's really going on. Thank you so much, Vladimir, and thank you for the work you're doing on this. In your opinion, was a full-scale invasion of Ukraine Putin's plan since the beginning or the idea of this major escalation matured during these last months of negotiations with the West? I believe that his idea from the beginning was a takeover of Ukraine through different possible means. I think uh, first, after uh, the victory of Maidan revolution eight years ago, they hoped for destabilizing efforts and uh, they maybe had a hope to bring some, well, if not pro-Russian, but uh, some less pro-Western or more passive uh, government to power, something that we see in Georgia of that sort with the Ivanishvili party. Uh, but all these plans failed. Plus also, I think uh, Putin maybe miscalculated about the weakness of potential Western response. I think important part was played by the fact that after 16 years of Angela Merkel, there's a new government in Germany, uh, there are presidential elections in France and President Macron is in challenging position to say the least. Maybe uh, Putin thought that because of all these Western domestic issues, the response will be weak. I think he miscalculated. I think it was this relative weakness uh, in his eyes that probably have prompted him to move towards the most aggressive of all the available scenarios. And that leads me to my next question. So would you say that the West was weak initially in their response and they grew stronger? And are there already any tangible, um, any tangible react uh, results as, and reactions as to the sanctions imposed by the West on the Russian economy? I have to say that the Western response to all that Putin has been doing, and, and, and it's a long story, it's not just wars against Georgia or Ukraine, uh, but it began with essentially the war on the Russian people. 
and uh, terrific onslaught on domestic civil liberties and freedoms, which later these practices were only exported. I'd say, yeah, uh, the, the Western response took so long. We can go back 20 years and remember President Bush looking Putin in the eyes with some soul searching. We can remember Obama's resets. Uh, we can remember hugs between Trump and Putin in Helsinki. Many stuff and, and a lot of uh, corrupt and commercial interests involved, uh, which have slowed down Western response. But listen, uh, it's better late than never. And it's actually very good that the West is awakening now. The hammer of sanctions that were introduced in the recent days is so strong that uh, alongside with uh, brave Ukrainians who are fighting for the freedom and who are capable of defeating Putin, these Western sanctions have a strong potential to actually bringing Putin's aggression to an end. Thank you, Vladimir. And my next question is about uh, Putin's mental state, in a way. He appears as a more and more isolated man, but obviously he still has a tight inner circle that supports him. So who are his friends? And do you think that the oligarchs who, that are now being sanctioned by the West will eventually turn his back on Putin? Is he going to listen to anyone inside or outside Russia? The problem with Putin's inner circle is that uh, uh, during his 20 plus years in power, he's been deliberately removing and distancing everyone with even remotely potential strength and independent standing, replacing them with a bunch of totally loyal yes men uh, and yes women. Uh, and this is what we see now. Uh, many people are, are wondering whether there will be uh, members of the Russian elite which will throw a challenge to Putin and maybe even try to oust him. But I see no such folks in there. Putin is heavily relying on uh, a very few of his uh, most loyal uh, companions, like uh, former head of FSB and currently Secretary of National Security Council Nikolai Patrushev. Uh, I'm sure he's the guy who was uh, strongly behind plotting the current invasion. And uh, chairman of FSB, Bortnikov, who is also a top figure on National Security Council. So essentially what happened in Russia over the past years is FSB, the security service, have taken control over most of the Russian elite. Most of the ministries and agencies uh, infiltrated them with uh, deputy ministers, deputy chairs directly representing FSB. There is tight control so, to the extent that my friends who work there uh, in the government system tell them that uh, it is very hard to arrange a meeting of like two or three people uh, in the government these days to discuss the situation because it would be immediately reported that somebody might, must be plotting something against Putin. So I do not really suspect uh, the coup d'etat less so with oligarchs because uh, their power have been significantly diminish. They are but the safe keepers of businesses that are effectively controlled by Putin and his uh, top friends from inner circle. So I don't expect any serious backlash by Putin's elite for now, which is why we need to double down on sanctions. We need to increase uh, our information efforts to reach through to the masses of the Russian population and wake them up. And we need to support Ukrainian resistance these are the forces, Ukrainian resistance, Russian population and Western sanctions. These are the forces that are capable of containing Putin, not some would-be elite revolts, which I don't see happening. Thank you, uh, Vladimir, for this important message. And uh, this leads me to my last question, which is about uh, Lukashenko's regime and Belarus. So Lukashenko has been a facilitator to the Russian invasion in Ukraine, supporting Putin in various areas. So how do you see Belarus' role in Europe in the future? And what position should the EU take towards the Lukashenko regime, but without undermining the population of Belarus who does not support his actions? I think we all see um, uh, an increasing situation where Belarus under Lukashenko has uh, ceased to be a true independent state. It has become a fully controlled and subjugated uh, client state of Putin, which I, I think European Union should not be afraid to speak about it loudly, uh, that uh, Lukashenko not only no longer represents uh, the people of Belarus, but the fact that he deprived the people of Belarus from the chance to take over in the 2020 presidential elections have led to effective takeover uh, of uh, the country by Putin. 
including military takeover, including uh, using Belarus, its military and its territory and its facilities to attack Ukraine. So I think it's vital that the European Union doubles down on efforts to essentially remove Lukashenko from power as a non-legitimate dictator uh, and uh, uh, reach out directly to the people of Belarus saying that, listen, look what he turned your country into. A Russian client state, uh, which is under very serious risk because it was dragged into a war against Ukraine. So stand back. We saw we saw a very encouraging uh, protest demonstrations in Belarus against uh, Putin's war in Ukraine. That should be supported. That momentum should be supported. We should reach out to people of Belarus directly and say, listen, we all need to get rid of Lukashenko regime and reinstall the sovereignty, reinstall the power of the Belarusian people. I think that should be the language and the aim of European efforts. Thank you, Vladimir Milo, for your comments and your analysis. And thank you to everyone who is watching this, this interview. Keep following our activities as the Martin Center, of course, keeps standing in solidarity with Ukraine during this extremely difficult time. Thank you, everyone, and see you soon. Thank you.